All right, y'all, you know, half step with Marcus J is live. We in the building. It's a holiday. It's Memorial Day, and we are celebrating the veterans, the ones that are here, and the ones that have given their lives for us here to be free in America. We want to salute them. Tonight's show is dedicated to them, and we appreciate you taking your time from your cookout doing whatever it is you do to listen to us. We got a hot show, y'all. I can't wait to produce this one. I got my co-host in the room, and I got my big bro in the room with his little sis debuting their brand new uh, their brand new segment, Bro and Sis Shenanigans. Got a lot to do, and we're going to do it with y'all. Ain't no half-stepping. Where Marcus J is right now. Hey. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores at the buzzer, Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning, watch it, Burris alone, touchdown! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! He hits one deep to right center! That ball is out of here! The Yankees win the pennant! If they lion, they must be half stepping. Ain't no half stepping when Marcus J is live. We in the building. Be down with us tonight at 804-402-2893 to be a part of the flagship show right here live from the Den of Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate it, y'all. Thank y'all for being here. We appreciate those folks who are listening to us on TuneIn. We thank you. We appreciate those folks who have checked into www.legacyinternetradio.com. We appreciate you guys as well. And of course, we got a special shout out to those folks who are listening to us right now during the replays on YouTube because of you guys. It's the reason why we continue to be one of the fastest growing internet radio stations here in the RVA area as well as beyond. We see the lights on all over the United States. We see y'all listening to us in Jersey City, New Jersey. Southeast Washington, D.C. We see y'all out there as well. And we see the folks that are checking us out on the West Coast. It's because of y'all, y'all. That's why we're doing this. So we appreciate it. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Sponsored by live action captions and free spirit enterprises. Of course, you'll hear a word from each of them as we progress through the show. I let it off as we set it up in the intro. Of course, what we got going on. Of course, we'll hear from the dating pool diva momentarily as well. Of course, as we go around the room, I usually bring in the co-host last, but I'm going to bring her in first because I'm so tickled to see her sitting there and we got special guests in the room that we'll introduce at the end but i look over the table and i see her. she helped me out on the intro and she is your co-host in mine my big sis s y butler what's up baby what's up baby how you i'm good i'm good i'm so glad to up, see y'all? you man last week you know we had a new show but it was like a hybrid new and old uh-huh. and it, you know all of it was pre-recorded so i didn't get to see you last week I man you, i miss you too man and you so, all sexy you know you got on your glasses well, I you like. know what can i say <laughs> y'all know he looking good <laughs> <laughs> checks in the mail but anyway thank you so much i appreciate it it looks I appreciate you, it, you know i feel good to see you over there and so of course we will continue with the salutations uh you hear this brother typically on the third monday of every single month but because we did a hybrid new and old show last week mostly well all pre-recorded we weren't in the building so we didn't get an opportunity to get him in here but we got him in here now it's my big brother i look across the table Y'all call him Uncle Phil. I call him my big bro, Joe. What's up, man? I'm good, man. It's good to see you over there, man. Oh, yo, yo. Thank you. Thank you. 
You uh, you doing alright? Yo, dog, you know me. I'm cooking all weekend, yeah. sitting out in the sun, getting a tan, looking as cute as I can be. She called me cute, man. She ain't say nothing about you. Oh, you can be cute, and I'll be just as sexy as I want to. Okay, if that's how you big sexy. Carry, that's how you want to carry. Wants it, okay. Yeah, we can get him some glasses <laughs> like I got. You know, Whoa, yeah, I got a mirror. <laughs> you just wow. you just build yourself up. <laughs> hey, I got you. Got to love yourself. Yeah, you got to love yourself. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, yeah, I love myself a lot. <laughs> Probably more than I should. <laughs> yeah, my big bro. Early. I look at yeah, right. I look across the table at my big bro, and I'm I'm happy to see him. But you know, I'm I'm you know you got a special guest with you. I'm gonna introduce your special guest here in just a moment. Uh, but I look at, you know across the room and I see. Joining us right now, I got my little sis, the Dana Pool Diva off the Charisma is in the building. What's up, girl? Ain't nothing much. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. A little rushed, yeah, but I'm all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's, 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 good. it's good to see you. You hear the sister on the fourth Monday of every single month, and she brings the uh, dating uh, the the diva diaries to us here on Ain't No Has Stable Marcus J. So we're going to hear another word from her uh, in just a moment. Of course, Big Bro Joe yep. is not alone tonight. Of course, he has a special guest with him. We're going to be debuting a segment. I'm going to let him take it away from here. Hey, okay. So let me just tell you what's going to go on. I have my little sis. You know, I know she hates that, but you know, my little sis Kim hate it. She hates it. She hates it. But yeah, my little sis Kim and I are going to sit there and debut something that we affectionately call hashtag brother and sister shenanigans. Now, I'm going to tell you when, you, when you think about shenanigans of brothers and sisters, you know, we might fight amongst each other. We might just get out there and just, ooh, but not nobody else get in it type thing. Nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. Yeah, this is my road dog ever since we was babies in the cradles and I'm holding her. She used Little to. Little people. She used to black out the TV on us, man. Have, has anybody ever had that 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 special someone in their life that used to just do dirt stuff and then hide their hand and your mom and pops are looking at you like, what are you crying for? And then they sitting over there, you know, with that grin on their face like. <laughs> innocent pie. Yeah, innocent. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, that was that one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and let her introduce herself once again. But that's my little sis, Kim. I do hate it. I do hate it. But I am, if he's Big Bro Joe, then I guess I have to be Lil Sis Kim. Mm -hmm. So tonight we are rolling out that brother and sister shenanigans. Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all ain't ready. This uh -oh. is something that we personally do on the regular. But I'm going to just let you know right now that you are not ready for what's about to go down. Uh oh. Well, you know what? I, I, I have personally seen a little bit of it. I'm sure I haven't seen how y'all all, how y'all do completely. And uh, we're going to show the Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J listeners here tonight how y'all really get down uh, tonight. So I look forward to it in the next segment. Uh, we will have bro and sister, brother and sister shenanigans with big bro Joan Little Sis Kim. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, as we typically do every single week, we always kind of start off with asking the question, what the hell? Because people is some, it's some kind of Kim is dumbasses in the world, Kim. There are dumbasses in the world. This is dumbasses in the world. You know, Judge Judy said one time, and I used to watch her a lot. <laughs> Judge Judy said that one out of three people is stupid. So if you in a cipher, and these are my words, if you in a cipher and you grab somebody, you're probably touching an idiot. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I, I just I'm just here to say that I'm not the dummy in the room right now. I'm not sure which one of you guys is the dummy. I think it's Big Brother Joe. You think it's Big Brother Joe? I think it's what? Big Brother Joe. Yeah, I'll take that today because <laughs> you got your LB and your little sister exactly. in the room. So you, you, we double teaming them. We double teaming them. All right. So tonight we're going to spend um, probably the first uh, segment here of the show, just kind of asking the question, "What the hell?" And I wrote a few things down. I wrote a bunch of things down. I'm not even sure where I want to go, but I, I looked at this first one. And in the spirit of Memorial Day and travel and all that kind of stuff, I want to start with this sister who thought it was a good idea to head down to Myrtle Beach and leave her eight-year-old at the, the crib by, by himself. Sure. And the reason why she did it, now Mama Jay's 12 this Wednesday, okay, May 27th, it's her birthday. She Happy birthday, Mama. She's going to be 12, my favorite human. Uh, it's going to be 12. And she is also a five-star uh, first degree black belt in Taekwondo translation. <laughs> tra translation: She can kick some ass if yeah, she had to. Much. Yeah, if she had to. But I'm pretty sure that Marcus J is not leaving her alone for the weekend 
at 12. No. Not was, even with me checking in. Not, not even with Big Bro Joe checking in. Mm-hmm. And he don't live that far. So, Kim, as the, uh, as the newbie in the room, I want your opinion first. This is out of Suffolk. Uh, and typically what I do is I just kind of give a little piece of the article. I don't need to because judging by the room, we all know the story. And there's nothing that we can add by reading the story. We know the story. So, Kim, you up first. This lady left her 8-year-old at the crib by herself while she went down to Myrtle Beach for Memorial Day. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, a couple of months ago, I've actually posted on my Facebook page and I was talking about these grown folks treating these children all kinds of bad, leaving them, you know, so they can go shopping, um, leaving them at home so they can go have sex and watch porn, going to get drunk with your kids at home. And my my general thought is if you don't want them, don't have them or drop them off at a safe place. You know, the fire station, the YWCA, somewhere like that will take them, no questions asked. But don't leave the babies home by themselves to fend for themselves. That's not cool. Yo, no doubt. That's not cool at all. I, I don't I don't know I don't know what to say about the fact that this lady left her kid at the crib by herself or by himself while she went to Myrtle Beach. Diva, uh we know that you 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 work with kids, you love kids. When you hear a story like this, what you think? I mean I feel the same way as you guys. It's, it's no different. I feel like it's ridiculous. I don't understand the logic behind that or why she felt like it was more important to go to Myrtle Beach. Um, and not even get a babysitter or someone to look after her kid. I, I mean, I don't understand that any more than you guys do. The neighbor said, uh, the neighbor realized what was going down, um, co-host, when that was weird. Um, there was noise in Close the back of the, the room, room that nobody <laughs> is over there. And, okay, all right. So, so we're not alone on Memorial Day. <laughs> Maybe a veteran just came and visited us. Okay. All right. I think we all heard it, but I think we would have been pawns if we didn't acknowledge it. Okay. All right, the acknowledgement is over. Uh, co-host, um, you got this lady who left her eight-year-old alone. She left him some corned beef hash and some microwavable pizza, though. So she didn't, like, completely oh, forget corn about him. <clears throat> corned beef hash and some microwavable pizza. And it was a neighbor who realized that something was a little bit off when the neighbor questioned the little man. He had clearly been coached to keep his mouth shut about having been alone, mm-hmm. but the neighbor cracked him, and he gave it up. And that's how we found out what's going on. What's your thoughts on the story? We know you raised two girls. What's up? Chris. Well, so. well, Mike Tyson on something. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, see, I don't want to say she's a bad parent. Why? I'll say Ho- it. Hold on a second. Let me finish. Okay. Sorry. My bad. I don't, I don't want to say she's a bad parent. Um, you know, she, she left him food and. And the whole nine yards. You laughing. You can't even justify. She had a plan, right? (laughs) She's an asshole. (laughs) She's a complete a-hole. There's no way that you would leave the eight-year-old in the house to fend for himself. Now, for the weekend, and you left little boy, let's say, I I think that the rule is in Jersey is if your minor... Uh, it, it depends on his mentality, whether or not you leave your minor in the house or not, right? Hold on. So, subjective. so it is subjective. Now, an eight-year-old, you left me, let's say I'm the, I'm, let's say I'm the most responsible eight-year-old you would ever come across. Let's just say, now I can't cook, and you left me corned beef hash, and, wh- and what else? Uh, uh, microwavable pizza. Microwavable pizza. I'm supposed to eat that? How long, how much corned beef has did you leave me? How many pizzas did you leave me? Did you leave me a can opener? A a, a can (laughs) opener? You know, is there a pizza cutter in the house? She sucks. She needs to have her her child, I I don't wanna say take, take the child away, but maybe somebody else in the family should be responsible for the kid. I'm, I'm saying I don't want to say take the child away because you don't want the child in the system. If there's a relative or someone True. else who can take the child, I would rather them take the child. I would not throw a child in the system. Yes, Kim? Okay, thank She's you. got her hand raised, y'all. I, I had my hand up. <laughs> so I have a question. Mm-hmm. If there was a relative that could have taken the child, why, why didn't, didn't the relative it? take the child while she was twerking at the beach? I don't know. Maybe the relative's at the beach. I don't know. Maybe yeah, the, the relative, relative is at the, at the beach. beach. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I, 
don't know, y'all. It was just the dumbest thing. It's, it's honestly, it's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And even if she coached the kid, she didn't coach this kid well enough that the neighbor got a chance to have a conversation. No, that's true. With too. the kid, that 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 actually was my first thought. You know, because yeah, I I, I was a latchkey kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm, were latchkey kids. I was. I, I I was. was. Okay, so we were latchkey kids. Mm-hmm. I was a latchkey kid. I was the kid that was five years old in 1979 who had a key to the house. But 1979 is not 2015. The mm-hmm. world is different. Mm-hmm. And so, and a latchkey kid is also a kid who gets off the bus, goes in the house probably for an hour or so yep, until and mom and dad home. comes yep. home and, and kind of, you know, takes care of you. We, we talking about a weekend. This 27-year-old mom left her kid alone for a weekend. And I don't know what was so important for her to go three states away, but um, I, I think there needs to be some sort of fair consequence for her i'm not a judge i'm not a lawyer so i don't know what mm-hmm. would be fair anything that i say would be speculatory but she she needs a little bit more than a slap on her wrist for this yeah, one. she she doesn't she doesn't need that child yeah honestly she doesn't need that child she doesn't want to take the time to let a weekend go to take care of her son she doesn't need the child keeping with the kid thing this next story um it's going to outrage some, and then there's going to be other people that's going to be like, well, what's, what the problem is? I'm getting this one from the New York Post. This was a story out of Queens, New York. How? Uh, you're Go from Queens. Pennsylvania. Go Queens. Go you're Queens. You're from Pennsylvania. Just keep reading it. Read the story, okay, man. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, PS 120 in Flushing held a carnival for its students last Thursday, big bro. Um, the kids whose parents didn't pay the $10 fee were forced to sit in the auditorium while their classmates had a blast. Big bro, 900 kids went to the Queens Schoolyard Affair with pre-K to fifth grade classes taking turns, each spending 45 minutes. Diva, the kids enjoyed inflatable slides, bouncing room, and a twirly teacup, uh, teacup ride. Uh, they ate popcorn, flavored ices, the DJs was blasting tunes. But Kim, check this out. About 100 kids couldn't be down with them because their parents didn't pay the $10 fee. So they were in a darkened auditorium to sit and watch old Disney movies while aides supervised music and shouts and laughter, of course, from outside. You can still hear it. Co-host, the must-pay rule excluded the poorest kids in the elementary school where most of the parents are Chinese immigrants, families crammed into apartments struggling to keep their head above water. Uh, it's heartbreaking that the kids are inside. One teacher said that. Uh, the teacher hugged a seven-year-old girl who was crying hysterically. She was the only one from her class who couldn't go, so obviously she was upset. The girl told others, quote, my mom doesn't care about me, end quote. Uh, but the teacher said the parents possibly did not see or understand the flyer that went home or didn't have $10 to spare. Are we being punished? One of the kids asked, Principal Joe Monroe tacked up a list of number of students per class. Quote, how many attending? Paid. How many not attending? Not paid. End quote. Uh, I think we've set it up enough. Um, Cam, I want you in on this one first. I'm picking on you because you're the newbie here tonight. But you gave me the strongest physical reaction when I started reading. So that's another reason why I'm going to come to you first. Uh, So I'm going to simply just kind of determine how I want this kind of discussion to go on this one. Um, I, I do a segment on the show called Fair or Foul. Uh, and so when I do Fair or Foul, I want folks to say fair or foul in a story and then explain their position on the story, fair or foul. So I'll ask you to start off your comment by saying fair or foul. The question is, these kids who didn't pay the $10 could not participate in the fair during school hours at a public school. Foul. Absolutely foul. I read about this earlier today. And... I'm calling foul because they're children in a public school and school used to be free. Public school used to be free. Nowadays, there are all kinds of fees and things lined up for the kids have to do. They buy the books, they buy the computer, they got special fees. They're not in college, they're in elementary school. Foul, especially if you're going to acknowledge that these parents maybe didn't speak English, maybe couldn't read the flyer. So did they know there was a fee attached? Or $10. That's a whole lot of money when you ain't got none. So if the month has already been met and the bills have already been paid, there might not be $10. Foul on the school for putting those kids in an auditorium with rusty Disney movies. Co-host? Fair. (laughs) Okay, let's hear it. 
a cold fair. Even when I went to school, the flyers were two-sided. The fly was in English, the, Sp- the other side was in Spanish. Now, I kind of know that Chinese. area. Yes, I kind of know that area. So I'm sure if there was a flyer, it's in a language where we all can read. And if not, we all know the dollar sign and a one and a zero. And it does say, it does say on there, well, it should have said, if you don't pay, your child will not be able to participate the kids weren't in the classroom doing work. They were in the auditorium. They were watching movies. Well, then granted, they were old Disney movies, but I think They've it's fair. They've been there watching Lion King 1990, huh? Okay. I think it's fair. Beauty Even when, when, yeah. when you went to school and you went on a field trip, you still had to pay for your field trip. So what's the difference? They weren't going anywhere. That's okay, but they had a fair that they had to pay for with whatever interesting words jungle fair. jungle well that's what it said right fair yep. no i got you so i mean hey big bro foul F- just foul are you looking at me yeah i'm looking at you because i don't want I, you know what honestly i can't believe you fixed your mouth to say that <laughs> foul and i'm gonna tell you why it's foul I, I mean i had to roll with my sister i mean we grew up in a household that our parents worked their behinds off mm-hmm. and they did the best they could with everything mm-hmm. And in this situation, how do you hold a child responsible f- and, and, and you can't produce for every child in that school? It's a public school and it's a school fair. It's not like a field trip where they left the school and went somewhere else. As long as those kids were there in that school, it is a disgrace and a damn shame that they made those kids feel less than what they are. If we're already talking about kids who, are, who might have self-esteem issues, who might have underdeveloped privileges and things of that nature, you can't tear them down like that. So why are we paying for the, for the fare? Why are we paying for yes, it? Yes, what's, what's the reason behind the cost for the fare? Well, first of all, the cost for the fare, I, I, mean, I have no idea I mean, what I know you personally don't for. know, but even if we went on a school trip, and, I, and granted, we didn't go anywhere, but if we went on a school trip, we had to pay. If you didn't pay for the school trip, you had to stay back and go to class. But you also had the option, your parents could keep you at home. They could keep you at you home. you didn't have to witness exactly. all of your friends. Okay, so then mommy or daddy should have kept me at home. When you were punished, when your parents punished but, you and everybody you went out. How are you no, punishing children? No, no, no. I'm not blaming the kid. I'm not blaming the kid or anything like that. But mommy should have kept me at home. You know, Even you know when what? my mom would take us out and one of us misbehave and we, we were going for ice cream. Yup, guess what, Sharon? You showed your butt why everybody but else wh- is getting ice cream. Why do you, you keep not? relating this to a punishment? Right. This, this is not a punishment for the kids. It's this a punishment is- to the kid. If you're the, no, no, no. I'm not saying that the school is punish. Well, the school yep. is sort of punishing the kid, but the mother or the father is not punishing the kid. But I'm the kid. You're the kid. Okay, you're the kid. That's why I'm relating it to but a punishment. This. We sit there and relate it, and I think Marcus J made the point that one child actually sit there and said that my mother doesn't like me. Wow. You're going to sit there and say that my mother doesn't, now, see? The, the, the child, you know what, you equate, children are, are very strange and they're people too. You equated the fact that I couldn't go to this because my mom and pops didn't have the money to take me there so it's a punishment and my mom and dad don't like me. Well, they should have kept, they should have kept him home. Yo, damn if, that, it's a public school. You know what, my taxes that I done paid already took care of all of them fees the already. Event- Cost Cancel the event. If the event, well, then there goes another option. Me, but that me, was not the option. Let me, let me kind of offer uh, a little balance to it because I understand both sides. Uh, I side with one and not the other. And I guess when I explain my position, you'll understand where, where I'm coming from. Um, I set it up before I said my final thing in the setup by saying it's a public school uh, during school hours. And so when it's a public school during school hours, I have a hard time with the fact that some kids get to have some benefit and other kids cannot. I also understand how it's an extracurricular activity, but I always, in this case, will fall back on the fact that it's a public school Mm -hmm. during public school hours. Mm -hmm. And to require or request or even think that it's plausible for a parent to keep their kid home uh, during a day like that, I think is a little bit cold-blooded one and two when we suggest well you know what not even suggest 
the, 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 you know, the elephant in the room is kids are little humans who have more feelings than grown mm-hmm. people. And to take a hundred out of not a thousand, so ten percent of the kids had to go in a room and hear the other kids outside playing, and it's a possibility that those kids will carry that for the rest of their lives. It's possible, and the fact that their parents didn't have ten dollars to give so they can participate to me is irrelevant. If it was a dollar, if it was a hundred dollars, in this case, it was ten dollars. You don't, you know, you don't traumatize kids over capitalism. That, to me, is just unfair. And I understand that they may have sent flyers home and all of that kind of stuff, but I fall back on the way I set it up. It's a public school during, public, uh, during, during school hours. And so I, I, I personally have a problem with this one. I, 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 I'm going to call foul on this one for the reasons that I, that I, that I laid out. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. This next one, anybody, before I lay it out, Dave, I want you up on this one first. Are you, do you play video games? Are you a video game person? You yes. play video games? Okay. Big bro Joe, you play video games? Of course. Kim, do you? Tech do you, do you, do you play, no. You don't play video games? Yep. Okay. So we we got most of the normal people play video games and then one person that's not normal. You know, little sisters. I'm going to let you have that one. <laughs> I'm going to let you have it, but I'm coming for you. You going to come get me? All right. <laughs> we, for the most part, the room plays video games. Um. Dave, I want you to comment first, but I need to question my big brother here for a minute before I, I come to you with, with the question. Big bro, okay. Joe, yes, you've sir. played video games for probably most of your 75 years of life, right? Yeah, you know, I got okay. my three score. Go okay, ahead. Right. With an abacus. Okay, all right. Um, have you ever played a video game and been given an avatar? Do you know what an avatar is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> have you played? Just, just follow me. Just follow me. You understand what I'm asking in a minute. Have you, been, have you ever played a video game and been just given an avatar? I mean, I was able to make my own. But have you been played? Have you ever played a game and been just given, given an avatar? No. Okay, so I guess you've never played Call of Duty, and I guess you've never played. Okay, well, okay, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I, have, uh, I have. Infamous, and, yeah. and, and, and okay. Well, then if you change that and put it in that light, okay, I didn't consider those avatars. I considered those characters in okay. the game. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. I got you. I fair. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, most of these games you play, you may not have a choice in the avatar that you're given. Correct. Getting this story here, Diva, from okay. AmericaAlJazeera.com, which is probably one of the most honest and balanced websites that I found. Because even though it has America in it, it's Al Jazeera, it's European, and they don't really give a shit what we think here in America. Right. They just tell the story. This story is about a video game in Europe where the given avatar was not a white man. The given avatar was a black man. And as a black man in America who's been playing video games since I was stealing quarters from my mama's laundry and getting beat in the head for it, I just told her myself, and she she knows we already had this discussion, I ain't scared of you, I'm scared of her. I dealt with her, I don't care about y'all. Been playing video games for over 30 years, 35 years for Miss Pac-Man. I've been given whatever avatar they want to give us. In this particular case, they're giving you a black avatar, and white folk are losing their damn mind about it, Diva. Right. They're right, a little right. bit annoyed about being given a black avatar. Now, I'm going to get to a little bit more of the story as we kind of talk about it, but I'm just curious to hear what thoughts of the room is when you hear a story about white folk getting mad about being given a black avatar. Does it matter? Well, to me, all play the video other games. video games have had mostly white folks. As the avatar At that you have, yeah, 9%. you might get you know a, a Asian or a Hispanic or something thrown in there, but but they were still white though. Look at Ryu. <laughs> here's a quote from yeah. here, here's one of the quotes. Here's one of the quotes, Diva. Yes. I was going to buy the game is called Rust, by the way. Rust. I was going to buy Rust today, but I'm a white guy and I don't want to take the chance of playing a black character. Also, for all of you saying it's just a game and you're racist, it's not a big deal. It sure must be a big deal if the devs. Are making people play as black characters. Are they all black characters? Um, there are a variety of characters, but the default character, the, the default avatar, is a black guy. They needed to get over it. I mean, that's stupid. That's co-host. That's really dumb. Get over it. Co-host, what you think? Hey, I'm gonna tell you now. Way to go, Rust. Because, like I said, you 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 made that point, and for years we played video games. And I just had to go back to, oh, Lord. Who was Ryo with? Real Ryo? From uh, Street Fighter? Street Fighter. How many black? It was only one black character in Street Fighter. He was a boxer. 
The boxer dude. I can't remember his name. It, it don't make yeah. no even it don't even make no difference. There's one black dude in Mortal Kombat as Mo- well, yeah. It's only one and he was what, a soldier he with one arm? He was with, a cyborg. With the, with the metal Jackhammer. Arm. Yeah, with the uh yeah, bionic arm, yeah. Yeah. Everybody else is white. They even got white women. They got more white women than they got black black folk on the on the video games. So guess what? So what, y'all? It's an avatar. Play the game. If you bad, you just bad. Sucker. Ain't no ass step on Marcus J. Kim. I know you say you don't play video games, and that's cool. I'm looking for a balanced opinion when you look at the fact that the world that we live in is whitewashed. We know that. I think that we'd be disingenuous if we didn't acknowledge that. And so most of the perspective is white. You have this video game that comes out where the playable playable character is black. White people are the ones that are complaining about that. What do you think about that? I know you don't play video games, but what do you think about that? What I think about it? Yes. Say it loud. I'm <laughs> black and I'm proud. Hey! Uh! <laughs> Say it loud. Jab 100. Keep it with the racial themes here because, you know, Big Bro, on ain't no half step with Marcus J. One thing that we don't do on this show is what? Half step. My brother. Co-host, I want you on this one first. RawStory.com. Fantastic four actor attacked by Twitter tro- trolls disappointed Twelve? that black is new and is he is black in his new film. Michael B. Jordan, we know him. Many of us are lear- learning learn- Fruitvale Station. Fruitvale. A lot of us are learning to fall in love with this guy as an actor because he is a great actor yeah. and he's starting to pop up in a lot of mainstream movies. Uh, so so if, if anybody in the room is unfamiliar who we're talking about, I'm showing who Michael B. Jordan is right now. Well, we know that he is playing Johnny Storm in the new Fantastic Four movie. Fantastic Four, the first two movies were kind of whack, but for having Jessica Alba in them. Now he is Chris going Evans. to be in Chris Evans, yeah, for those folks. Who <laughs> yeah, but Jessica Alba like was better. But Jessica Alba was in it. He's playing Johnny Storm, and white folk ain't happy about it. White folk will let you know when they ain't happy. Just like they wasn't happy about being given a black avatar. They ain't happy about a black actor playing a role that was traditionally white in the comics. A white guy trying to play Jesus. Yeah, well, I we mean, not gonna go there. So, hey, look, we can <laughs> though. We, we can, go we, but, we, but we can. <laughs> and so I try. I, you know, that was you know, it's one of those okay. things where I was looking for a long and comment, locked. but that was a drop the mic comment <laughs> right there. <laughs> So y'all need to get the hell over it. Good for you, Michael. Play that role, boy. Hell to the freaking one the black com- man. One of the comments, Kim, turns out that this is what they're saying. A black guy, I don't like it. They must be doing it because Obama is president. Other commentary. <laughs> the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> one, you know, one, one guy said that. Kim, what were, you, what were your thoughts? Okay, first of all, poor President Obama. Everything is this man's okay. fault. <laughs> Everything. But... I would like to bring it back to the fact that the Fantastic Four is a comic, which means it's not reality, which means I can take creative license and make Johnny Storm blue. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But I do like one thing you said, the white folks will let you know when they're unhappy. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they vote with their dollars when it comes out. Yeah. Oh, they going. Oh, they gonna go see it. They are gonna go see it. They gonna. They gonna. Real go, talk. They gonna go see it, diva. Yeah, uh, diva. I, I, still three white people in it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, got, y'all got some left. Yeah. Yeah. I don't but even the, know but, the three. But that's twenty five percent of the cast, and you know we only twelve. So I, if, if, you know, for real talk, <laughs> so I don't right. know. I don't know. It's twenty five. Then it's fifty. Yeah, man. Then it's seventy five. So, so diva, um, keeping with this kind of, uh, keeping with this kind of story. Um, not really going too far away from this, but Yafit Kodo. Many people don't know who Yafit Kodo is, but Yafit Kodo is a black actor. He was very prominent in the 70s. He was the first black villain in a James Bond movie. In 1973's Live and Let Die, he played the villain in the movie was set in New Orleans. He's kind of a person who gets to have an opinion on the subject because we were talking a few months ago about potentially having James Bond being played by a black man, that black man being the British Idris Elba. And so I come to you and I ask, because I know how you feel about him, judging by the physical reaction you're having yeah. right now, and hopefully, you know, you don't have too much of a moment. I think but, he like white women. It, you know, but 
but but in all seriousness, how do you feel about how folks are reacting to Michael B. Jordan, and how would you react? I don't know. I've never asked you if you like James Bond movies, but mm-hmm. suspending the fact that we think that Idris Elba is an attractive black man, which right. even as a man, I can tell you that I agree with that. Sex. Do we think that it's appropriate to change up traditional, even if they're fictional characters, and crisscrossing races? Absolutely. I mean, we're in a cultural world and the world is more black or more, you know, ethnic than Caucasian anyway. So it's going to really appeal to the masses. And um, yeah, definitely we need to be able to cross over and and have black more black characters and black people on money and black people on everything. I know that when we were t- <laughs> when we, we talked, no, nah, man, y'all, y'all, y'all killing me right now. I'm trying to be cool. Let you, go ahead, Joe. You can tell the world what's going on. Did you know what I was going? Uh, yeah, you can tell the world what's going on. I'm trying to be professional, and uh, just for the record, big bro, I didn't crack. Okay. Can, can I get that? I didn't crack. You didn't give me crack. one more. Yo, you held character. I held on, man. Yo, I, held on. All right. So let me just. I'm not gonna call nobody out by name. That's why. But uh, you know, people trying to get you know people trying to get comfortable. I'll just leave it at that. They trying to get comfortable, making a little bit noise, trying to get comfortable. So Yo, that's what you know. What's but going he held on. character. I held on the character. Can I just have a little bit of input? Absolutely. Because I I know when it first came out about James Bond and, and Idris playing Bond, and I mean I'm not a Bond fan. I have never really seen a Bond movie. Um, sorry. Because everybody now is looking at me like, what? Don't worry, I ain't looking no. at you like no kind of way, girl. I've seen, I seen about 25% of Bond. Are you Bond. serious? I was do, it y'all like, are such women. I was do, it like I Tom call, Moore I do was call, the first Bond? Roger Moore. Somebody Moore. Sean Connery. Sean Connery, <laughs> Sean Connery Roger <laughs> Moore, Sean Connery Pierce, Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan. And the new dude is my... Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig yeah. Daniel so, Craig. But there was this same backlash when they gave it to Daniel Craig because Bond has never been blonde. Yes, and he's typically Bond, not Bond. been from Wales. Uh, no, right, he's, he's Scottish. He's, he's, well, he's Scottish, Pierce yeah. Brosnan is Irish, is, but... And, and uh, what you call Timothy Dalton is Welsh, but yeah. yeah. But, yeah but, but yeah, but but he, he was sucked. a blonde Bond, yes. and everybody yes. had an issue with yes. that in the yes. first... I think he's done two or three Bonds now. Yeah, and three, everybody, the third one this comes is the third one And up. everybody loves him as Bond, you know? Because so he's I think that Idris is British. He is. Um, and he's a great actor. He is. And he fine. He Girl. Is. Thank you. I'm watching and Bond now. Right. <laughs> so, again, I think we get caught up, you know. I want to see a black Sherlock Holmes and, you know, with we got the show with Lucy Lewis Watson. I'm just saying, like right. it doesn't Lucy matter. Lou. This is it's a brave new world. It's a big world. It's a multicultural world, and white folks need to have several seats face the corner. I, I <laughs> <laughs> stand, stand and in count the corner. The pain it, here's, here's my here's my thought on it. I, I per- personally, uh, fictional characters, I don't really have a problem one way or the other. Like I'm unmoved by Michael B. Jordan being Johnny Storm. I'm unmoved by. Idris Elba potentially being born like it doesn't oh, move me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care one way or the other. You know, like I, I, I almost don't notice it. Like I didn't even notice that Lucy Liu was an Asian female. Not only is she not a white man, but she's an Asian female playing Watson. Like I didn't care about that. Where you lose me is you have a a Australian Noah, and when you have you know, a, oh. a, 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 or when you have. Abraham that's from freaking you know Great Britain that's where you lose me when you have historical figures that, where, are, black. that are not black when we know historically they are you know we, 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 we know the history of what Jesus looked like he did not look like Shaggy from Scooby Doo he just didn't just like just like all these pictures that you see in the stained glass it, you know that's not what Jesus looked like you got a blueprint you got your basic instructions before leaving earth that you so quick to, to quote scripture from why don't you quote the scripture that tells Tells you what Jesus looked like, and you don't mean, give me a movie, you know, with John, Jim Caviezel. <laughs> yeah, but watch this. You know, but we did that to ourselves because you know Florida, it, and I love good times. You know, I do. But what did Florida say? Florida, do? Florida was the typical brainwashed Christian black female yeah, who didn't yeah. know no better. Exactly, and that yeah. was a completely different. You know, that was the seventies. That was a yeah. different. But you know what? Time. Florida lives now. 
times. And you Florida know Florida. Florida does live yeah, now. And you know Florida. But what I'm saying about good times, the show is that it was at a different time. Right, but what I'm saying we still, were just think about embracing it. embracing being black and proud. But think about it though. You got Jesus on one side who's blonde headed and blue eyed, and next thing you got is my Luther the King but sitting you over see, on the other side but looking bro, at it. Did you see how aggressive? I mean, let's, let's touch on that for just a minute. I don't want to spend any time on that, but I think that was a good point when we brought up good time. Did you see how aggressive and how angry she got when JJ painted the picture of black Jesus? Like yeah, she, black, yeah, she, she was, was mad. She was angry. She wasn't just offended. She was offended and she was angry as if she to say, how dare you yeah. change the, vis- the vision of this white Shaggy from Scooby Doo looking Jesus, and I don't say Shaggy from Scooby Doo looking Jesus to be disrespectful. If you disrespect, it's you problem. That's what he looked like. He looked like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, Cesar Borgia. Look him up. That's who the model of Jesus was. So I, that to me is crazy when it says that he had kinky hair, hair like bron- uh, skin like bronze. So, but hair like wool, hair like wool, and, and skin wool. like bronze. And that sounded like a brother to me. He looked more Saddam like Saddam Hussein, Hussein yeah. <laughs> than he Real did talk. than Shaggy from Scooby Doo. And I asked that with Marcus. The last thing I want to get to in this in this segment, uh, Big Bro Joe, you yep. got a black artist that wants to go around the country and burn Confederate flags to commemorate Memorial Day. Uh, Confederate flags. He wants to burn them to commemorate Memorial Day. John Sims is an artist from Sarasota, Florida. I'm getting this from thegrio.com. He's honoring his constitutional right of self-expression by staging burnings and burials of the rebel flag, uh, which we all know what the rebel flag. You and I were together in the interest of full disclosure. Yesterday, we saw a rebel flag, and I was annoyed by it because I ain't from here, and I'll never get used to seeing one. But, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this one. Get quick comments from everybody. Wish it thoughts on burning the rebel flag to commemorate memorial day or to burn it for any reason um i'm gonna put it here i'm gonna get some flack i can understand if the sons of confederacy have an issue with him burning the flag why because and 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 i'm just gonna put it out there i'm we gonna bang on this just a little bit more when it comes to my hashtag brother and sister shenanigans we're gonna bang on that a little bit more for memorial day it's not a memorial. It's not. It has nothing to do with that. My issue is I won't allow or won't see the United States flag burned or stomped on because I'm a soldier. I won't sit there and stop anybody from stopping somebody from burning the Confederate flag because you know what? Guess what? Good men died because of that flag as well. Sorry. Okay. So I have a little... I, I don't I don't know how I feel about the flag. I don't when I see the flag I cringe too. Okay, but these are people who believed in okay, let's just say white white people, white period, right? No, not necessarily. Well, they they believe that they were you correct me, the okay. master race and that their you know, everything should be white. It's white. You stay on your side of the fence, I'll stay on my side of the you fence. You know what that whole thing was built on though, S Y? It was built on capitalism and money. Okay. It was free labor in the states below the Mason-Dixon line that they were going to get, and they were going to outcapitalize the northern states because they just couldn't get they couldn't get y'all to do what they wanted y'all <laughs> to do. Okay. Let, I mean, so you had to watch the balance in that. It, 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 you have those extremists. Okay. Yeah, we do. We have them skinheads. We got some other Aryan nations. Da da yada 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 yada. Aryan Nation folks really don't must don't understand what a swastika is because it was actually a Japanese symbol for peace and honor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I have a question, and you can give me give me the history lesson. Who made the flag? Which one? The Betsy Confederate Ross flag. did. <laughs> The Confederate flag. Well, I, I, I don't. I don't know the history know. behind who because made the flag, but I know that the the flag. We well, we can. The flag was a symbol for the South. It was their country flag because they viewed themselves as a separate entity. Right. It was a the sovereign United state. From the they seceded from, from the they union. They seceded from the union, which is the reason why they had their own flag. They had their own economy and all of that kind of stuff. And Abraham Lincoln, the great liberator as a Boo. military tactic mm-hmm. free the slaves so that he can cripple the south so that they could no longer have the power that they had because they had seceded that was strategic and military Thank you. it was mm-hmm. not about being the benevolent great liberator that many folks think he was okay well, well you know, I, I, know, I know that part about i'm gonna him. tell you again let's stop now because how many people in this room ever watched the dukes of hazard and love the general lee we all did i mean i can't speak for the I ladies but mm-hmm. i i you know i didn't know the history you of it, it. You i didn't 
didn't, I didn't know the history of that flag. It. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the history of that flag growing up. Now, as an adult, knowing the history of the flag, I still like the show. Mm -hmm. So if that makes me a hypocrite, so too. be it. It does. Yeah. But, I mean, I also read a story that said that things that you like up until your 13th birthday, you will take to the grave. So, <laughs> you know, it I is. mean, if you... But if like you, I said, yeah. LB, I, I still go back to the same point that I made. Mm -hmm. Understanding, uh, being a soldier and mm -hmm. understanding what certain things mean. I can't sit there and go along with, you know, stomping on the flags. I, don't know, I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Kim. You got a final comment before we move William on? William Porcher Miles designed the Confederate flag. Okay. William Porcher okay. Miles. All right. Was he black? No. Doubtful. <laughs> but I bet you a black woman sold it. Yeah, I'm sure. I know she did. <laughs> I'm sure she, had she to did. Sew it. If she was a if they was in the South and she was his slave, I'm pretty she sure sold she did. It. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Dan of Legacy internet radio we appreciate you folks for staying with us 804-402-2893 shout out to my brother Sid. what up bruh said he was listening to us he let us know that Sid, balrog was the name Sid. of the video game character on street fighter that we couldn't remember the <laughs> brother you. his name was balrog so i uh, appreciate said thanks for listening brother ain't no ass that marcus jay we're gonna take a break when we come back we have the debut of the new segment brother sister shenanigans marcus jay and the crew will be back in a minute